most process control, including most automation, is there to actually produce a product or produce a, a service. And hence, um, the attitude that we need to take slightly differently to what has been normally um, taken is instead of being technically um, um, tied up and also um, concentrating on controlling a process, in other words, controlling the loop, controlling the temperature, is that we have to make sure that the system also produces the best outcome for the particular factory or the particular service. And that is, in other words, it needs to have an economic view on it. And the economic view of it um, tends to give you a far better um, consistency of product when you apply the, the principle to it. And the consistency of product becomes an important thing in what is sometimes um, referred to as quality assurance or quality control. Now, the earlier you can build in the consistency of a, of a product, and hence the consistency of a um, of a uh, of a process or a machine, the better the outcome, the final outcome will be, and also the re the far less reduction in waste, and that's one of the biggest cost um, disadvantages you will have in a lot of processes is that the waste that is generated or through rework through loss of material and also through loss of time become an important aspect. So driving um, a process to have improved control, and there are several ways and we'll go, we'll go through those um, soon, is that um, you get a better outcome in terms of consistency of quality. And that that aspect, the consistency, is the one where most um, processes tend to drive towards. Not that they're actually giving you a, um, a better uh, performance, and that also is the, an outcome, but the, the goal is to make sure that the consistency is actually uh, held. So, and a very quick um, example of that, if you have um, a piece of uh, um, equipment and you may make a hundred of those in an hour, if 50 of those have to be re reworked because of them being out of specification, then it becomes an, uh, a very large burden. And then if you can reduce the out of specification to say 5%, then they are more consistent there reduces the, um, the the actual rework and increases the throughput rate. So it's important that it becomes an um, a integral part of your management of your system. Okay. So then there are um, several optimization uh, theories and also practices that are put in place. The most basic one and ones that you've probably been um, uh, looking at, sorry, exposed to is what is referred to as a basic with a, um, a definition of um, a feedback loop and that's in other words a PI and D algorithm. So it's the, the one that um, is a step above manual control um, and gives you a, um, a relatively good um, con technical aspect uh, control over your product. Now, it has its limitations, so what tends to occur is that um, other more um, intuitive or I should say um, closely aligned to the process type of uh, control methods such as the um, simulation and the multiple variant control um, have um, been established and we'll go through some of the principles of those now. Okay, so the um, the key process um, can be mathematically modelled via your understanding of your machine. Okay, and what that basically means is based upon your knowledge in both the dynamic um, 
relationship as well as the steady state relationship of the process, you are able to mathematically create a, an algorithm which then can be implemented within a controller to give you a prediction of what how the machine is actually going to to work. So, and um, the goal being that if you understand the process well, then you can account for any type of disturbances and also deviations quickly because you know how they will react and how to counteract for those. And it is that understanding and that basis that um, gives you a very good close relationship to the process which the, the controller can then uh, look at. So if we then have a look at in terms, we start by looking the, um, the actual uh, process in terms of a, a block diagram. Now, the block diagram being um, what you see here of what you can actually control and how that control actually creates an outcome. Okay. So, um, and what you then have to consider under a very simple model is what is the direct relationship between the control input and the output. In a more complex model or a, com a model that is um, taking in more um, subtle influences, then the term disturbances come into it. Now the disturbance by definition affects the control output or the control input it's, and its ability to actually give the output. So they could increase the effect or they could decrease the effect but in other words it actually um, reduces the controllability of the direct control output. However, if you then put that particular input, the disturbance input, into the model and use it to predict the outcome, then it is better well suited and better controlled for your process.